how do you expect a buy-in? Because one of the things you've said is the lack of trust between the Nigerian citizens or the residents of Nigeria and their government. How yes. do you expect that buy-in? How can, how can it be smoothened? Uh, well, uh, it's a very difficult uh, question to answer because the issue of trust in government is not just something you deal as an isolated case. You must build confidence over time. The confidence has been destroyed you know, because of government non-performance or underperformance. So you need to actually draw up a framework to build confidence over time. So if you are talking about you know, trust in government, it's a difficult issue because you need to look at Nigerians. Why do they mistrust their government? Why don't they trust their government? I was reading um, a survey result yesterday in the Times of India, where the Pew Research Center got um, uh, people interviewed and discovered that 85% of Indians trust their government because government is performing. But on the other hand, about 53 of Indian citizens want a military autocracy. They want a strong leader. They believe that democracy is not working the way it should work. So many malfeasance in government. And the welfare of the people is subsumed under the interests of politicians. And it's all over the world. But this case of Indians, 53% of Indians, wanting military autocracy is something that is quite intriguing. And I was wondering, if uh, Puricide should come to Nigeria, what kind of discovery would they make? Many Nigerians feel that democracy has failed. But, but, but this, this case in Joss, uh, let, let's bring it back home. This okay. case in Joss uh, seems to suggest that it's an eye for many eyes. <laughs> an eye for many eyes? Yes. Not an eye for an eye. It's not, this is because this is way beyond what an eye for an eye should stand for. I mm. mean, a, a, a child was killed and then 27 people overnight lose their lives. Yes. And the governor, we understand, is uh, calling for investigation into this. How far an investigation do you think, or how much of a result will come out from an investigation ordered by the governor? Well, um, I don't know. Investigation, you know, government investigation is uh, typical, you know, you might not even hear anything again when an investigation is ordered by government. So I don't expect anything from you know, the investigation ordered by government. But the point I'm making, you're saying eye for many eyes. Well, it's, it may look like eye for many eyes, but it could be an eye for an eye. You know, when you say eye for many eyes because one child died and then about 29 people died you know, in, in retaliation. But the point is, there is mistrust, very strong mistrust between communities. This is a case of Fulani versus Biron people. I didn't want to go there, but it doesn't make a sense, any sense if we keep pretending that all is well between communities. There are cultural identities that come under focus. People want to be free from certain domination that has been there for decades and when things like this happen you know those uh, images come to play and that is why you have this kind of bizarre attack since you've gone that route because the Birums, <coughs> what they predominantly do it's uh they, they farm the acha the local acha yeah uh, that's the hungarian rice and also uh corn yes and that area, Miango as a whole, it's just a huge farm. You drive for, for, for kilometers and it's just a huge farm ahead of you. Yes. I know that particular location and uh, uh, it's surrounded by a few hills there. So I can imagine that there was a, a herdsman, the boy, and was able to bring his cattle to that area. Mm. And that annoys the Biron people mm. very much. Yes. And they can be volatile about that. Judging from this analysis, would you say that that happened and that was the result that led to the death of the boy? I think so. What you are saying is, is correct. But one other thing you must know, when I talk about mistrust, the failure of consensus, 
I'm talking about the issue about communities living together, coexisting, and those images of domination that has been there over time. Once something happens, those images come flashing back, and people act upon those images. But would those images really be an issue if, for instance, we had, we had strengthened the police force such that they can be seen to be doing their jobs, no matter who's ox is gone? Yes, that's one way to go. But you also know that the police force is a government institution. And this In mistrust, yeah, this mistrust, So they, they, they won't trust the police, they won't trust the army, they won't trust any security agency? Yeah, because when you look at the formation of those forces, who are those that populate the, the formation? So these are also questions you need to raise. Isn't that a dangerous scenario? If they begin to look at it from that angle, that perspective, rather than just say, well, this is the police force. Is that what they do? They look at the population of those agencies? Yes, we do not see the police force as the Nigeria police force. Why not? Oh, they are Nigerians, all right. But we begin to look at the cultural identities again. That's why I talk about images. You know, who are those in the police force? And they believe that those who are in the police force are not for us. Rather, they are against us. And that is why the issue of community policing comes into focus. If you have people who understand the communities, the cultural issues, you will be more comfortable dealing with them. Oh, that, that's, that's, uh... that's one, yeah. It, it's something that, you know, um, I'm not sure how, how that is going to play out now because um, if, as the police is presently constituted, yes. and then they seem to be doing their jobs, uh, just as I said, no matter uh, whose ox is gone, you're still saying that they will still look at those who populate the force. Yeah, if the police force, as presently con constituted, do their job with yeah. fairness and justice, mm -hmm. yes, issues won't be as this. You talked about domination. Uh, let, let's revisit that. Yes. Who is dominating who? Well, you want me to go that, that route? Please, I can go that do. route. Okay. When you look at the communities over time, I talked about indigenship and settlership. Some people had come to settle, but became more powerful. The Hausa Fulani, for instance, became more powerful and dominated the minorities in those areas when you talk about Taraba, you talk about Benue. I'm sorry, is that directly related to this particular scenario? Yes, it is directly related. It's Irigwe Biram. Who? That the area that was attacked now. Are they the also, Biangu, yes, Biangu it's, is, it's a Biram Ancha. community. Ancha. It's called Ancha. Yes, it's Biram. It's Biram community. And that is why you have this kind of tension, you know. And um, why would somebody or a group of people launch an attack on a community village? You know, the village of Ancha and slaughter about 27, 29 people just for the death of a single boy. That tells me a whole lot. Yeah, but I mean, the, um, the special task force, that's the uh, Major General Anthony Atalagbe, the commander of that task force, yes. while he went on an on-the-spot assessment says, they're going to investigate uh, what exactly happened, how this happened when they had sent the men there to protect lives and property. That's part of what we should encourage uh, and hoping that at the end of the day, those who are found, if anyone is found mm -hmm. wanting, will face the music. If that happens, wouldn't that send some message that, yes, we're here mm -hmm. to ensure that we do our jobs yes, and security? Yes, yes, it will. It will. I agree with you. But what I said is that government investigation is typical. People already expect that nothing will come but, out. But who else this. is supposed to investigate it? Yeah, government, government agencies, all right. But they haven't been doing the right thing over time. And that is why people don't trust such investigations. And I'm saying that until we begin to deal with situations like this with all fairness and justice, we are not going to go far. Okay, for this particular scenario, yes. what would you like to see being done so that they can then have that confidence restored. Okay, but for this particular scenario, I would want this kind of investigation to happen and let the results be published and let culprits, culprits be found and punished so that people can see that justice is done.
If you say that, it has happened time and again and we didn't get that kind of result. That's the point. You are coming to my point again. So, so let's repeating do it. the same let's strategy with that. will not work. That, that's what it means. Pardon? Repeating the same strategy that hasn't worked in the past and doing it again is just a waste of time. No, I'm saying that if we do the right thing, do the investigation, and we know the culprits, we identify the culprits, and get the culprits punished right. for, for purposes of deterrence, then we can take it from there. Right, and until um, we begin to do that, we're not going to go far. That's the point I'm making. All right, Dr. Neki Doko, uh, security consultant. We appreciate your coming on this morning. Thank you very much. All right, and uh, we'll be back in a moment. Uh, we'll still have uh, uh, Senator Adudu in Abuja. He'll be joining us soon. Don't go away.